was a B-17 pilot during World War II. I flew many combat missions in the B-17, and it was a good aircraft. It, it took, took me in there and it brought me back home. That's how come I'm here. Uh, I brought one back so badly shot up one time that uh, they pulled it into the junkyard and stripped off as much as they could salvage and that fuselage never flew again. So I was without an airplane there. And then uh, they took part of my crew and put it with another crew and then I didn't have a crew, so I came back to the States to be an instructor pilot. But uh, the uh, school that I was supposed to go to uh, never developed, so I never was an instructor pilot. And they didn't know what to do with me, so they sent me to the University of Denver to go to college. And then I stayed in the military, uh, active duty and reserve. I did 30 years and retired as a lieutenant colonel. Nice. That's about it. What was the name of you? Do you remember the name of your plane? Uh, I didn't have a name on my plane. That wasn't common for your... Uh, all aircraft did not have a name. Just very few had a name. Oh, okay. Like this sentimental journey, it has never seen combat. It was built uh, at the end of World War II and it never got overseas. But uh, sentimental journey is a good name for this one because it's a sentimental journey when you go up into in it. I bet a lot of memories there. A lot of memories. The smells and the sounds and oh, the yes. vibrations and oh, I yes. bet it brings <coughs> brings it all back. I was out here yesterday and I sat in the, in the pilot's seat where I normally sat. And they asked me, do you suppose you can fly it? And I said, give me 15 minutes and I'll get this thing off the ground. <laughs> yeah. It was a good aircraft. Well, and very easy to fly. Really? Yeah. And they're going to take you up today yes. for the flyover. Yes. That's, that's, I think that's great. Yeah. Well, John and I set it up yesterday, and he apparently went out to the cemetery to see what it looked like. <coughs> but he and I set it up yesterday, so I'm going to be there during the flyover to make sure that we're doing it the way we had planned. That's good. Well, thank you very much. You're I, welcome. Sure. It's a real honor. Like I told you, you know, coming out here and seeing the plane is one thing, and seeing the guys that 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 actually flew it yeah. is is a real thrill. Yeah. Well, <coughs> we were all young. I was 21 years old, and I was a flight commander. Were you considered kind of old at, at 21, or is that the average age? That was the average age for the officers. Uh, the uh, gunners were usually just fresh out of high school. <coughs> Everybody was young. You didn't see any... <coughs> excuse me. You didn't see any old men around. Yeah. And the the group that I was in in England was right next to the group commanded by Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart was was a group commander out there. And I met him afterwards. I didn't meet him. I met him after uh, the war was over. He was a real nice guy. Nice. He was. And where where was your 
uh, do you fly out of one base in England or? Yeah, I, uh, I flew out of a base called Shelveston. Okay. It's about 70 miles north of London. Okay, I gotta look for that on a map. It's not listed. Really? No, it was, I think, uh, a temporary place. Oh, okay. That's about it. Well, thank you very much again. You're that welcome. was this is a real honor, like I said.